Who do we have present on that matter? We got our Corey Flay for petitioners. Amy Powers for the child, Emma Ryan. Amy Turnbull, the guardian of Lauren Ryan, Your Honor. Hold on just a minute. All right. Uh, so where we're at, hold on just a second. Get these other ones out of the way. Is the guardian of litem had uh, filed a report or at least mailed it in. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, I know it was emailed out, uh, but I still don't see it in the uh, the system yet uh, as far as being, uh, I do know, I did read, I'm not sure who this is. Uh, I did read the uh, recommendation, I did read the report, did read the recommendation, so I am familiar with it. So at this point, my question is, where are we at with things? Um, Your Honor, the latest updates I can provide are that there's now custodial interference um, cases in Oregon. Um, the issue is now that um, I know the the DA is having trouble um, enforcing uh, the ability to arrest Lauren at this point because Lauren is not complying with anything. Um, my clients are hoping that we can facilitate some sort of drop off tomorrow at noon at the Seaside Police Station. Um, but we would need the court's authority to do or order that. Um, there's also been discussion of, you know, way for the warrant that you've issued, Your Honor, to be um, extraditable to Oregon. Um, I'm not sure if the court has a mechanism to do that. If that's possible, we would greatly appreciate it. But I think there's now just multiple crosshair or crossing of issues between different state jurisdictions and criminal and civil matters, um, this guardianship. So, but at this point, um, as far as factually what has happened, um, Emma's location is still unknown to us. I know that my clients informed me there was case management hearing for Ms. Ryan this morning at approximately 830 um, in Oregon. Uh, the phone number she called from was a 503 number, so she's presumably in Oregon. Um, but as it stands, we've made no progress uh, for petitioners to have Emma in their care. Um, so we're essentially in the same position. We're just asking for basically more um, more impetus to make Ms. Ryan comply uh, via the court with whatever means that the court can do. Mr. Gooday? Um, yeah, Your Honor, I got a message from my client this morning talking about how she had court in Oregon. Um, so I don't know if we need to have a hearing based on the GAL report and go through with that, or I would defer to the court on how to proceed. Um, let's see, Ms. Powers. Thank you, Your Honor. I have reached out to Emma. I have a phone number that the GAL provided to me. Um, I have not had luck in actually getting in contact with her. Um, I've called several times. She did call my office back one day. Unfortunately, I was out of the office that day. I have texted with her. She occasionally responds, but for the most part does not respond. And I have no um, assurance that the cell phone is actually even in Emma's control versus somebody else's. So I have not had an opportunity to find out what her stated interest is. In the absence of a stated interest, uh, my job is to advocate for her legal interest. I've reviewed the full court file. I've reviewed the court visitor report from her brother, Jonathan. I've reviewed part of the parenting evaluation regarding her sister, Madison. And I have significant concerns that her legal interests are not being protected at this time. Um, and I also have concerns that even if I made contact with her, the information she provides me may not be reliable so long as she remains in her mother's care. Um, the evaluations and records show a history of the mother uh, pressuring the children to give certain information to authorities. So I think the number one priority needs to be at this point to get Emma uh, into the guardian's care so that um, she'll be in an environment where I can get an honest um, position from my client and know and know what she wants going forward. Um, and so until until that happens, um, it, my plan is to go forward advocating for her legal rights, for education, stability in her daily life, um, and all of those things that she deserves. 
All right, is there anyone else related to this matter? So it's an interesting question about the warrant. Uh, I, you know, quite frankly, I'm not sure. Um, and without researching it, I don't know whether I can extend it to uh, Oregon or not. Uh, that said, you talked about this idea of having a um, meeting in C or, or maybe have an exchange in Seaside um, at the police department, Mr. Play. Yeah, sure. That's a request for tomorrow at noon at the Seaside Police Station. Okay. Mr. Gaudet, is that anything that can get arranged? I don't think so, Your Honor. My client feels like this is a coordinated attack to steal her child from her, and I don't see her voluntarily dropping Emma off tomorrow. So I think the only thing that I can do at this point is take some... If, in fact, I can find the authority to extend the jurisdiction of that warrant into Oregon and California, surrounding states, bottom line, um, plus California, uh, being that she was known to, uh, at, at least at some point there as well, uh, extend the warrant, then I will do so. Uh, I just don't know. And I need to look at that before I do anything more. Um, and then um, my thought is we'll just set this over one week. If not, I don't think we have any choice but to proceed forward to uh, trial or hearing. Uh, and uh, now that we have the, the guardian litem uh, report, uh, I don't know if the guardian litem has any thoughts. Clearly, I think that the child needs to be in the in, in the custody of the guardians. I don't know at what position or at what point can custodial interference be charged against Ms. Ryan. But I think that additional, you know, action should be taken at, against her at this point. Okay. All right. So I think that's what I will do as far as today is go ahead and uh, issue, uh, extend the warrant to the surrounding states plus California, subject to my seeing and making sure that that is authorized. Uh, I've got to check that before I can do any orders. Um, and so I will make sure to advise counsel. I'll probably have my judicial assistant uh, send an email or I'll send an email to everyone uh, advising you so that we can get that going and then just set this over one week to uh, make sure and, and have a uh, follow-up to see where things are at. And if I simply can't, then at this point, I don't think there's any choice uh, but to go ahead and proceed forward uh, to, like I say, hearing or trial. Your Honor, I believe the mother also has family in Florida, so I don't know if it's worth it. Extending, if you can find a way to, you know, extend the warrant to also extend it to Florida or other states. So I guess that would be one question, Mr. Flay, is do you know if uh, there's been any uh, reports of custodial interference to the law um, enforcement? Are you asking if there's been any filings of custodial interference in any state? It's here or elsewhere. Uh, obviously, if it's a criminal matter, I'm looking at different uh, considerations in regard to uh, picking or uh, issuing a warrant. Well, Your Honor, and I can my clients clarify if not, but I, I, my understanding was that there is an active case going on in Oregon. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what the status is. California and Florida is completely unknown to me. So, but if if my clients want to speak to the hearing that they attended this morning, I'm happy to have them them because they, they witnessed it. I did not see the hearing at 8.30 this morning, so they can they can attest to what the status is there. 
Thank you, Your Honor. So the case that she had in Oregon this morning is custodial interference, but it's regarding the abduction of her nine-year-old daughter, Madison, last summer. They charged her with custodial interference in Oregon, and it was a case management hearing. We have filed custodial interference reports in both Tacoma, San Diego, and in Clatsop County. Um, all of those are being investigated, and we are hoping that the DAs will move forward with pursuing charges um, for custodial interference or some kind of abduction. In Florida. Okay. All right. Well, that uh, gives me uh, some additional information there. And meanwhile, I'll look at the civil side of things and see uh, whether the jurisdiction can be extended. And like I said, I'll advise counsel one way or the other. Uh, obviously, we don't have as much um, latitude as we might uh, in a criminal case. So, Your Honor, can I add one more thing? So, we did touch base with Cowlitz County Sheriff's Department to ask them if they would pursue custodial interference case there. Um, they referred it out to uh, Clatsop County for them to have jurisdiction. And I don't know if you have the authority to even like help pursue that matter in Cowlitz County, but you know, we would love it. I do not. Okay. All right. Uh, so with that, anything further today? I believe that's all, Your Honor. You said we're setting this over one week. Correct. So I'll set this over to uh, March uh, 28th at 1030. Your Honor, I'm scheduled to be out of town on vacation with my daughter for spring break next week. Um, and I'm not sure I'll have internet access. Okay. Um, well, uh, is, would everyone be okay? Is spring break next week, I take it? Okay. Um, what about April 4? Are you back, Ms. Turnbull? Yes, that'll work for me. That might be an issue for me, Your Honor. Uh, I do notice that the emergency order expires April 11th. Would the court want to set it out to April 11th? Because we'll need a new order at that time anyways. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do that. If there's something urgent that comes up, you can note it on and we'll address it at that point. But let's just go with the April 11th since that's uh, the date at this point. And Your Honor, to clarify, um, we'll be hearing from you or your JA prior to that on the warrant issue. Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank with you. that, uh, we'll see you on April 11th. Amy Powers here for Emma Ryan. Okay. Any, anyone else I have? Mr. Baldwin is standing in. Amy Trimble, the guardian ad litem. Do I have anyone else appearing on this matter? Matt and Brooke English, the guardians. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Baldwin, it sounded like maybe you had a request, so... Mr. Goodday reached out to me, Your Honor. Um, he is out on paternity leave. Um, he's trying to manage court appearances as well, but had a doctor's appointment scheduled, I believe, for their newborn at the same time as court today, so he couldn't appear via Zoom. He reached out asking if we could appear, showed on for review. He wasn't sure if any substance was intended to happen, but just was asking if he said over to him being available. Um, by the name of his client, nothing came up on a conflict check. Um, other parties did show up as a potential conflict for our office. I'm able to handle anything substantive. Um, but he's not able to be here. And I, I did tell him I would appear on the docket to let the court know why he wasn't present and ask if he said over if anything was to occur for a time he'd be able to appear. Mr. Play? Uh, Your Honor, according to Josh, Mr. Goodday's email, uh, he's known about this for at least a few days. He didn't inform us that this would be necessary. Again, this case needs to move forward. Um, What's on for review today doesn't really have anything to do with Mr. Goodday, frankly. Uh, we're talking about the objection filed by Emma, um, as well as possibly the review of the GL report. But um, I, th I think we can proceed without him. He could have informed the court that this was an issue uh, days ahead of time. I'm not sure why we're learning about this right now. Ms. Powers? Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to a set over. I'm prepared either way. So I guess at, at this point, Mr. Baldwin, do you know about the case or do you have any information on it? I have no information, Your Honor. My my notes from Mr. Goodday were just that um, the matter was on for a review 
Um, with nothing new, I don't know if you anticipated that there would be argument regarding the objections filed by counsel for the child today. So he was under the anticipation it was just effectively being a body here for the matter. Um, and because I think that I have a potential conflict, I wouldn't be able to appear on the case as in a representative capacity, other than, I guess, to let the court know that Mr. Gaudet is not present. If your honor doesn't believe he's necessary and he would be excused from the hearing, then I guess I'd be excused from the hearing and I can just go as well and the parties can do what needs to be done. But if it's something that he would need to be present for or have a position on, I can't say. So I'm just letting the court know what his request, what, what I was informed, that if there's anything substantive to occur to ask to set it over um, and provide the court the information that I have. So that's that's all I can say. All right. Well, um, court does, I, I do wish he would have uh, given prior notice on the, on the request. Uh, I did see the objection. I would like to hear at least that much and then uh, go from there. So Mr. or Ms. Powers. Yes, Your Honor, would I be excused then? I'm sorry. If, if Mr. Goodday's not involved, I, if I he's would... not involved, then I'm not, because I, I, at least one party did a consult with our office at some point in the past that I wouldn't feel comfortable uh, representative capacity on the case. So if the court's going to proceed without him, then I'm going to let him, I'll let him know that and he can um, check FTR. But I, I don't think I should be standing in in any way, shape or form other than just to inform the court he's not able to be present. That's, that's what I told him I would be able to do. Okay, go ahead. All right. Thanks, Your Honor. Um, following our last hearing, um, Emma reached out to me pretty quickly after the last hearing and um, had some pretty strong feelings about what was happening. Uh, I've spoken with her over the phone on three different occasions. Um, we have uh, communicated back and forth minimally through text message and email. I've tried to keep everything uh, on telephone because that seems the most reliable sh shot I have at um, hearing from Emma uh, with without other influences. Um, through our phone calls, she expressed very strong opinions about what was happening in this case and wanted to make sure the court was aware of her feelings and um, her perspectives on this. That's why we went ahead and filed an objection uh, so that her voice could be heard. Um, she did not feel like it was accurately heard through the guardian ad litem. Um, report. So that's why we went ahead and submitted the objection so that the court would have that information. Um, I will be transparent with the court that I had phone calls with her because they were phone calls. They um, were not as reliable in terms of if I'd been able to meet with her face to face in a neutral location. Uh, but the telephone calls were with uh, somebody that reliably sounded like a um, teenage girl. And I believe that they were Emma and um, so we have filed that objection. Mr. Flay? Your Honor, I think this plays into the narrative that we've seen from Lauren Ryan this entire time. Um, why can't Emma meet in person? Why does Emma have to be on the phone? Why are there limited text messages that are the only correspondence that, unfortunately, Ms. Powers is able to have with Emma? Even if Emma is the one saying these things, what is gravely concerning is that she's under the helm of a person who has been controlling her and controlling everything she does since September outside this court's order. So it's haunting me, and I think the court in general, that we've now come to the point that I don't think that Emma is able to even um, accurately think for herself. Whether or not she believes this, I think it goes outside the scope of what is the best interest of the child here. I think that she's been far gone at this point to whatever is a semblance of normalcy. Uh, we're talking about a child who's been living as a vagabond for, you know, over six months now. Um, of course, Lauren Ryan's told her that my clients are the bane of existence. I mean, what, what else did we learn from this case is that Lauren Ryan will do anything and everything to make things go her way. So I, you know, I, I respect uh, what Ms. Powers has done. I think that she gave an accurate um, representation of the court. And even by her own admission, she, you know, cannot fully confirm um, that necessarily, you know, this may or may not be Emma saying these things, or at the very best, she hasn't said, this is my position that even if Emma is saying these things, that she's not working in her best interest. This is not the best interest of Emma. It is not the best interest of the child. It's below the standard of the, what what is necessary for um, this to be dismissed. So we'd ask your honor that, um, you know, the objection be 
taken with that that grain. Um, I I do not think that Emma knows what is in her best interest because unfortunately she's been living in a, a warped world that is far, far from what the best interest of a child is. Thank you. Ms. Turnbull, anything? Yes, I, I think that my report uh, spells out the lack of stability in Emma's uh, housing over the last number of years, as well as the lack of stability and education that she has received over the last number of years. And that points to Ms. Uh, Lauren Ryan's inability to provide for um, educational and, um, frankly, parenting responsibilities uh, by statute for Emma. And whether or not Emma believes that she is, um, that what are in her best interest, it's clear that Ms. Ryan is not providing for her uh, by statute and and that's not and, and that's not in her best interest. Uh, and I would agree with Mr. Flay. I don't think that she um, really has a clear sense of maybe what's normal at this point, given all of the chaos that she's been subjected to. Anything can I have a, from anyone? Can I have a brief reply, Your Honor? Go ahead. Uh, just uh, as Mr. Flay was talking about Emma's best interest, I just remind everybody that as her attorney, my job is to represent her stated interest. And um, she was pretty clear that she does not want to live with the Englishes. She'd prefer to stay with her mother. If that's not possible, she'd prefer to go to her maternal grandparents. Um, and then lastly, her concern was that she has seen social media posts. Um, Brooke English was involved in them and they were embarrassing to Emma and felt like an invasion of her privacy. That was one issue of concern. Mr. Flay, are you aware of such posts? Your Honor, I am aware after reviewing the objection. I've instructed my client um, clients to, to refrain from that in the future. Um, I was unaware of those posts prior to the objection. Um, so I would advise my clients and, and that will no longer be an issue. So uh, in regard to the objection, it's noted. Uh, and at this point, uh, you know, again, uh, for all the reasons and concerns, uh, we don't know what, under what uh, surroundings uh, the objection uh, and the conversation with powers was made. Uh, this is a child. Child doesn't always know uh, what's in the, the best interest. Uh, and at this point, I, I just don't see any reason to change anything. So uh, I do caution everybody uh, and your clients to please refrain from putting this on social media. It's not appropriate. So that is not to happen again. Uh, that said, uh, my thought at this point, uh, I did review the Guardian Light and Report, uh, report, and it just seems like this matter needs to be set for trial. I'm, I'm not sure what else to do at this point. Any thoughts? I'm not against that. I think procedurally we're in such a odd spot as we were not even in the general guardianship phase yet. So I don't, I, I'm not opposed to a trial. I think that's ultimately where this is going to go. But I just, my concern is that if, if there's going to be procedural issues of Miss Ryan, not even letting this get past an emergency guardianship, I worry about her ability to appeal because of that procedural issue. Um, so I, I, I guess maybe there needs to be more research done. I, you know, it's obviously a relatively new area law. Um, probably the court didn't anticipate <laughs> the situation this severe. Um, so I, that's that's my main concern. Um, but if the court's comfortable, um, I mean, that's that's obviously up to the court, and I'd be happy to, I guess, memo the issue. But again, I don't I don't know what would be found given that it is such an odd situation. Can I weigh in a little? Go ahead. My thought is that if I'm understanding the correct the statutes correctly, the emergency minor guardianship order really is only supposed to be 60 days extended one time for maximum of 120 days. The first emergency minor guardianship order was entered in January. We've really basically exhausted that that remedy under the statute. So it seems like we we do need to go to a hearing on the full guardianship um, and potentially. Although I do recognize it, it's definitely a strange case. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you one of the questions that I've had is when you have a parent that's been out on warrant for some time, if that in any way stays uh, the time factor, I, I just don't know. And like Mr. Flay has said, it's new law. And so 
not a lot to rely on. And Ms. Powers, just to clarify, um, we have requested and attempted to do the next steps for the general minor guardianship, but because of um, because of Ms. Ryan's inability to, frankly, do anything in this case, uh, it's it's kept us from from moving further there. And the, and again, the the court has felt I think uncomfortable jumping that step without the child actually being transferred. Is uh, sorry to speak out of hand, uh, Your Honor. I just that was no. I just wanted to clarify that. That's that's fine. And I guess I'm not understanding which step is missing or which, I mean, I know that the transfer of the child has not occurred, that there's been held ups there. I'm just trying to understand procedurally what what is the missing step. Mr. Flay, were you? Um, I I think, you know, given judge warning, um, previous is previously on the case, and I disagreed with this initially, but I think that the Hang up was that the court was unwilling to to move from uh, emergency minor guardianship to the general minor guardianship, given that the child's not in custody so, or in the guardian's custody, and therefore, because of that, they're unable to really even call this a guardianship. Basically, we're in this holding pattern of okay, this can't move forward until the like the child is transferred. So I and I see the court's reasoning there. I've again I've asked for a review on the general guardianship, but usually that's kind of the the answer we get to is this is still technically in that stage because no transfers happen. So, because the the basis for the general minor guardianship is that we're reviewing what the care of the child is like in the English's home, right? So if if that's impossible, then I guess we just don't really have anywhere to go. So that's that's I think been the court and our hang up as well with everything. So I would prefer to have. Um, also, Mr. Gooday or one somebody that can actually be here and represent the mother, uh, be present. Uh, ultimately, what I, I would like is for everyone to do some research and uh, try to see if there's any guidance, even from the old laws or anything within the old law that can maybe be used. And I, I think this law, is, although new to Washington, I'm not sure it's necessarily new in, and, and I don't know, in other states, I just don't know. But why don't we go ahead, Mr. Goodday is not here. Like I said, I don't feel real appropriate to uh, do anything substantive as such today um, since he's not here understanding um, why and, and what's going on. But um, let's go ahead and set this over two weeks and um, have Mr. Gooday here. But meanwhile, do some research, see if you can find something that maybe can give some better direction um, to the court as to next steps. I, I'm, I'm at a loss, honestly. Your Honor, are we again doing an order extending the emergency minor guardianship? I'll go ahead and do one. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, just one other little brief qu question. I have almost used up my 10 hours court appointed on this case, and so I was going to send over an order um, asking for some additional hours. Can I send that over ex parte, or do I need to know that up? You can send it over ex parte. Uh, we have a, a, a different judicial officer reviewing those. Uh, okay. So just send it over. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So not able to really do much today, uh, kind of in a gray unknown area of what to do. So uh, do some research and we'll try to look closer at it. And hopefully Mr. Gooday will review FDR and um, and do some as well. Uh, Your Honor, would you like us to prepare, if, if there's enough information, prepare some sort of memo before the next hearing? If not- That I would be good if okay. you have something. Sounds good, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. That concludes that matter.